Hey there, I'm Gray Estrada, Chinese medicine lifestylist, face reader, podcaster, educator, and artist. This is a quick crash course in face reading. So what is face reading? It's one of the numerous classical branches of traditional Chinese medicine. The two branches that are known the best in the West are acupuncture and herbalism. Here are some key ideas. One, form and function relate. A tiger's teeth and stripes point to a carnivorous diet and camouflaging with its environment. A monkey's long limbs and a light body point to agility while moving through the trees. Because humans are a part of nature, the same rules apply for us. Variations in our facial features points to aptitudes, talents, personality traits, and aspects of our physical and mental health. Two, facial color and appearance relate to health. When someone has jaundice, their skin and eyes turn yellow. When people don't get enough sleep, they get dark under the eyes. Chinese medicine stipulates the colors on the face are indicative of various organ functions and is considerably more complex and nuanced than what's understood in Western medicine. Three, we all instinctively face read. Look at these photos and tell me which person you think is the ex-Navy SEAL and martial arts expert. Have a guess yet? If you're like 95% of the people I show this to in my courses, then you pick this man, Jocko Willink, who is indeed an ex-Navy SEAL and black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The question is, why did you pick him? Because people's bone structure, muscle tone, coloring, wrinkles, and facial shapes all clue us into people's dispositions. Face reading is practical, and it's a skill that can be and should be developed. Four, face reading is a form of profiling. The FBI and forensic scientists analyze handwriting, known as graphology, to assess and capture criminals because people's handwriting points to personality traits. Law enforcement and psychologists read body language to figure out if someone is lying or telling the truth. Face reading is simply another way to assess our personality, emotions, and experience. Five, face reading is about pattern recognition. Chinese culture was excellent at documenting patterns observed in life and nature. These observations were recorded and passed down through hundreds of generations. Fast forward to modern times and the Chinese have accumulated thousands of years of fascinating data relevant to the open-minded and modern human. It can't predict one's future, but does aim to identify rhythms and patterns in your personality that support your intrinsic nature and optimize the direction you take your life. Six, face reading is relative, not absolute. It is not psychic fortune telling. It's not about strict definitive answers about people and their experiences. Acknowledging this keeps face reading humble and realistic. It's about assessing one's features in relation to priorly documented data and attempting to find relative patterns that could support the complexity of a person's aptitudes and experience. Face reading is indeed fallible, but that doesn't make it irrelevant. Seven, public persona and interpersonal nature. Chinese medicine relies heavily on yin-yang theory, which in a nutshell is the theory of polarities and opposition. Some examples are birth and death, men and women, night and day, hot and cold, expansion and contraction. This means the left and right sides of the body are said to carry their own polarity. In the context of face reading, the right side of someone's face relates to their public persona or extroverted nature, while the left side relates to their interpersonal nature or introverted nature. Terms and definitions, Jing, Qi, and Shen. These are known as the three treasures in Chinese medicine. It's said that if you guard these well, it ensures a life of health, longevity, and emotional resiliency. Jing relates to our genetic expression, bone structure, stature, how well we age, sexual vitality, and the talents we inherit. Qi relates to the energy we yield from the quality of our breathing, eating, feeling, thinking, and sleeping. Qi is not a mystical energy that allows telepathy or telekinesis. The closest and most modern definition of Qi is bioelectricity. Shen relates to the consciousness, anima, and personality of a person that can be seen, felt, and experienced, but not quantified. Mountains and rivers. This is a lens within face reading where we think of the face as a geography or landform. The areas with bony protrusions are mountains, and the areas containing moisture are seen as rivers. The mountains are the forehead, nose, cheekbones, jaw, and chin. The rivers are the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. Assessing the mountains and rivers of a face points to a person's most ideal geography to live in. The five elements. Fire, earth, metal, water, and wood are seen as five phases or rhythms in the natural world that mankind has been dependent upon since the beginning. They are seen as non-self-aware personalities and or the emotions of planet earth. Because we're an extension of the natural world, these rhythms can be found in us in relation to our organs, emotions, activities, and facial features amongst other things. Some people carry more of certain elements than others, but we all carry some of each. Hey everybody, so I'm back. If you were following my channel 
pre-lockdown 2019, I started this face reading series, and when the lockdowns hit, I was confronted very quickly with how much of an extrovert I am. I've always known this about myself, but when the world contracted inward, so did I. It was a very rough patch for me. My mental health suffered quite a bit. The bonus was I got into the best shape of my life. Just turned 42 recently. I've lost 70 pounds. I'm in very good shape. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Good blood work. So in terms of health and lifestyle, I definitely had some gains, which is very cool. I'm very happy about, but it's taken me a while to get back to being more public with this kind of thing. A lot of the joy of face reading was taken away from me to a certain degree when the world shut down. I did not do well during that time. But that said, I'm coming back up for some air and I'm glad to be back. So I'm going to start these face readings again and I'm going to invite all of you into a certain amount of interaction as well. If there are people that you would like me to read, definitely leave them in the comment section. And I'm going to change the format a bit of how I'm doing these face readings compared to when I was doing them in 2019. So before, I had a pretty strict formula of sorts of what I did. I, was going to, I went through Jing Chi Shen. I went through the mountains and rivers of a face. I went through where they should live. And I was trying to pack a lot into a short time. And what I'm going to do is shift this a bit more. I'm going to kind of take the cream off the top. I'm going to be a bit more focused, shoot from the hip, and I'm going to do less preparation ahead of time. So before I used to kind of spend a lot of time looking at their faces and really trying to get everything down on paper and me just kind of going over my notes. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to be a bit more spontaneous and shoot from the hip. And I want to read his face kind of for the first time right here. So I have less to fall back on and I think that will speed the process up. But please keep in mind that should any of you want a face reading, I am offering face readings. And please know that those sessions are 75 minutes and they are way more involved and you walk away with a visual PDF and it acts as sort of a guide of sorts for you to take with you after the session is over. So what we're seeing here, okay, on these YouTube videos is not going to be a fully fleshed out, flushed out um, face reading. It's gonna be more condensed, more focused. So with that being said, let's jump in. Russell Brand. Russell Brand is in some trouble right now. He's definitely in some hot water. He's got some pretty serious allegations against him right now, sexual in nature. And I'm going to do my best to keep this neutral. I'm not going to speak to whether I think he's guilty or innocent. I don't, you know, I don't want to make that claim by any stretch. But I like Russell Brand, for the record. I like his podcast. I like his message. I like what he's had to say. I genuinely hope this isn't true. But... That remains to be seen. You know, if these things went down, there should be some consequences. But like I said, I'm gonna to try to keep things pretty, pretty neutral to the best of my abilities. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. And I'm Grayson Estrada. My specialty is a branch of Chinese medicine called Yang Sheng, which translates as life nourishment. So what I focus on rather than disease management, which kind of the Western medicine does, what I focus on is life nourishment, the activities, the lifestyle rhythms, the seasonal adaptation, tuning into life and specific to your personality and your face, engaging the lifestyle rhythm, rhythms that will make you the most optimized human. It's about nourishing your life force. So face reading is the access point for this. That's what this is about. This is a branch of Chinese medicine. So in any case, let's talk about Russell Brand. The first things when I look at his face that leap out to me are the framing of his face very rectangular. So this jumps us right into five element theory. So in Eastern philosophy, five phases or five elements in the natural world, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. These five phases are sort of like the emotional rhythms of planet earth. You can sort of think of it like that. And because human beings are connected to nature, where mammals were part of that kingdom, we are going to have these representative elements inside of us and in our personality, in our the shape of our features, the shape of our body. So all people have all the elements in us in theory, but some people are gonna be more loaded and more calibrated to certain energetics, certain elemental energetics. So the rectangular shape, okay, all of the elements have a shape associated with them. Fire is triangle, earth is square, Fire, earth, metal, metal is circle, water is curved lines, and wood is rectangular. 
So when we see a rectangular face, his face, if you were to attach a shape to it, is more rectangular than anything. It's not a circle, it's not triangular, it's rectangular. So what does this mean? When we look at the framing of a face, you want to think of it like the framing of a picture, right? The frame can make or break a picture or really accentuate it, and the frame points to the wood element. Now, each of the elements regulates organs. Each has a, a paired organ. So liver and gallbladder specifically are run by the wood element. So the liver in particular, though, the liver is responsible because in Chinese medicine, the organs digest thought and emotion, not just compounds. So they're like these energetic matrices that digest thought and emotion. So in the context of the liver, the liver energy regulates anger. It regulates vigor on the positive side, anger on the other side. But the liver energy, the wood energetics, are about driving force. They are about robust boundaries. Um, if you think of like a, a piece of wood, like a battering ram, right, just like bashing through something, that's all wood energy. And his face has this, that rectangular shape. That's the wood element. Now, in addition to this, the each of the elements in Chinese medical theory, when you look at them, they all have these archetypal military associations, like military roles or military uh, jobs of sorts. So the heart is, con is seen as the emperor, right? That's the, that's the one that runs everything. The seat of consciousness resides in the heart in Chinese medicine. The liver is the general. The general is, we get up at dawn, we attack at this location, you do this, you do that, and you wait for my call. You wait for me to, I, I say when we deploy. So with general people, when we see this shape, we're gonna see someone who is willing to speak their mind. They are likely going to be outspoken. They have no issue saying what they want and really pushing hard with it. So if we look at Russell Brand, where he's gone with his life, actor, outspoken comedian, podcaster, makes a certain amount of sense. So that being said, Lots of wood energy in his framing. Now, Russell Brand has even more wood energy outside than just the rectangular shape. The other two parts of the face that are regulated by the liver are the jawline and the eyebrows. So when we think about this, the jaw you want to think about as the root of the tree. Okay, this is the root system, the jaw. The more cut this is and the more dominant the jawline is, the stronger the root of the wood energetics and the liver energy is. The eyebrows are the foliage. That's like the trees or the blossoms on the tree. So you wanna think jawline is the root of the tree, the eyebrows are the tops of the tree. Now, if you see a person with very bushy eyebrows, but a soft, rounded jaw with not a clean jawline, that usually is more of someone's energy, wood energy is superficial. It's more of like, they're still gonna have maybe a, a temper, right, with that anger, um, element of the, uh, of, the, of the liver being involved. They might be a little quick to irritate and those kinds of things, but it's short-lived. Person with the strong jawline with, okay, these heavy eyebrows, it's like double whammy. It's saying like wood, 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 right up in front. And so if a person has very sparse eyebrows but a strong jawline, that means deep down they have some very strong driving power in terms of vigor, um, how hard they push in life, lasting power in bed. There's lots of things that associate with this, but the liver also regulates the free flow of emotion. So people with really strong wood features, they really do have to tend to their mental and emotional space more so than the average person because if the liver gets backed up, it gets too hot, they pop and it's not pretty. So people with really, really loud, explosive tempers, lots of wood energy. So that being said, he's got lots of wood energetics. Eyebrows are bushy, strong jaw, and the other thing to think about is when we look at Chinese medicine, right, there's so many layers to it, and I don't want to do too much deep diving, but this is relevant. People that have strong wood features also have very high libidos, usually. They have a high sex drive. So why is this? If any of you have had acupuncture, which is what I went to school for, acupuncture herbs, my, my background is Chinese medicine, face reading being a branch of Chinese medicine, part of the life nourishment spectrum. But if you ever had acupuncture, they stick needles into you. Those needles that they drop in are not arbitrary points, they are pathways. The theory here is in Chinese medicine that each organ has an internal pathway and an external pathway. It's like, a, it's like an external highway of information. So for instance, the lung channel starts in the diaphragm, 
comes up through the heart and lungs, and then it externalizes right here at lung one and lung two, goes down the inside of the arm and ends at the thumb. So if you have lung issues, they're gonna be needling the lung channel. The liver channel goes down the front of the body and does a loop-de-loop. -loop. It wraps around the sex organs in men and women and then down the inside of the leg out to the big toe. So when we look at pathology or movement of energy in a person, if they have strong wood energetics, chances are they have a lot of energy moving through that channel and it just so happens the liver channel wraps around the sex organs. So this is why we see high sex drive with people who have a lot of wood features. So Russell Brand follows suit. He is self-admittedly a sex addict, used to be recovering, but very much so had a very strong sexual addiction problem. Now the other piece is, which exacerbates this even more on his face, is the fullness of his lower lip. So one of the, the telltale signs for a person with high libido and face reading is a person who has a predominant lower lip. The lower lip is larger than the upper, and the more pronounced that is, the thinner the upper lip with a really protruding lower lip, the more hedonistic and the more sexual and kink-oriented and fetish-oriented, more public sex they're gonna be. So the lower lip and the more the lip protrudes, if I always think of a Bubba Gump in a Forrest Gump, right? When the lip does this, and you can see the moisture of the inside of the lower lip, and a person's lip has that almost kind of bulbous look, the more pronounced that is, the more hedonistic ten the tendencies are. So with Russell Brand, we have a person with all of these strong wood features, and then this very full lower lip. So it just points to, like, it doesn't, it didn't surprise me at all when I read Sex Addiction. I thought, Phew, all right, here we go. Makes a certain amount of sense. Now, the other things that I noticed about Russell Brand, he's got pretty intense eyes. He's got kind of crazy eyes. So a lot of his pictures, when you look at him, I mean, he's a comedian, right? So the, that element of like these wily eyes is very aligned with the fire element. And the fire element is about creativity and fame and fortune and glitz and glamour. And so his eyes are very intense. And so it makes a certain amount of sense given he's an actor, a comedian, he's quick-witted. His eyes definitely scream a certain amount of fire. Now, the other pieces, the things that I found interesting about Russell Brand, he's got a broad forehead, okay, really big forehead. So th the face in Chinese medicine is seen as a holographic template. The, the face is like a small representation of the larger whole. And so he's got this big, broad forehead and the, the, the corollary, the correlation for the forehead is the mind, okay? like our thinking capacity. So big broad forehead, big dominant forehead, we're looking at big open mind. And if you look at what Russell Brand talks about, his ranginess in thought and in the topics he goes to, he ranges from you know, spirituality to comedy to political issues, like he's all over the place and that forehead really screams big open mind, the capacity for intellectual expansion, like the ability to go in lots of different directions. So that's one of the things that I really noticed with him is this big, broad forehead. Now, the other dominant thing that he has that not everyone has, and it's, it's unique, is something called the death mask. Now, the death mask is not, it sounds bad, but the death mask is not inherently a bad thing. What this means is it's a countenance in the spirit of the face. So three, la three layers in face reading, Jing, Qi, and Shen. Jing is the material, Qi is the energetic, and then Shen is the immaterial. It's the spirit or feeling that comes off of a person's face. Some people, when you just see them and they smile and they get that look, you can feel a lot from a person just from a, a glance, right? People with a lot of charisma have bright Shen. So with Russell Brand, he's got the death mask. And the death mask is characterized, one, by sort of a skeletal look. The more hollowed out the cheeks are, the more pronounced the cheekbones, the more we see that, okay, where things are hollowed out and you can really sort of see the shape of the skeleton, this is the death mask. And the people that have the death mask, according to theory, okay, face reading theory, is that the death mask are people that have a strong death instinct. So what does that mean? People that are good fighters, people that are willing to get in the ring and be on the membrane of life and death, that have that strong instinct to fight and not really worry about getting hurt, risk takers, will see this face, the more hollowed out that is. So the death mask is people who have this strong death instinct. They're willing to confront or be on the edge of that membrane, like I said, between life and death. So Russell Brand, you know, he's sort of a pathological representation of this because if you read about him, huge drug addictions, lots of problems, heroin, I mean, cocaine, you name it. 
And what that does ultimately is brings you definitely closer to death. People that are willing to engage in that consistently are willing to walk elbows, you know, elbow to elbow with death. So the other thing is when you have the death mask, the other piece that goes with that is that yes, risk taker for sure, but the death mask also gives you the capacity. People who have this feature oftentimes are well suited for things like shamanism. People that are kind of into the occult or spiritual topics or that are willing to to contemplate, engage, and think about the spiritual or the metaphysical. So again, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing. It has to be tempered like anything else. It can be a gift if used the right way. But the good thing is, as I look at Russell Brand through his iterations, right, as he's aged and he has changed, is his face is not as hollowed out as it once was, which is great. And we start to see some fullness coming back to his face. And that is characterized by earth. The more plump things are, the more juicy and round and soft and squishy, the more earth we have. The earth is the basis for the immune system and also our musculature. So the earth element is important too because classically the earth element sits at the middle of the five element wheel. The other four elements circle around earth. All things stem from earth. So if the earth starts to come back as a person ages, it's a good sign. It means like their collective health is uh, on point. And I've seen that in watching Russell Brand over the years. He's got a beard, which is also um, indicative of more young, and then he's plumped out a little bit. He's put on a little weight. And in his case, given all of the years of drug addiction and stuff, this is actually a very good thing. A couple key final notes on the death mask. One person who has a pathological rendition of the death mask is Iggy Pop, which you can see in this picture here. That hollowed out skeletal look, tons of drugs, lots of risk taking, very hard on his body. Now a positive iteration of the death mask is Alex Honnold, the free solo climber, the guy who climbs, does that crazy shit with no harnesses and I mean, the guy's got seriously big balls. And that guy has a death mask. He's got the hollowed out cheeks. He's also got big ears. So big ears are indicative often of risk taking. So Alex Honnold is kind of a, a positive rendition. Still risky though, right? He's still playing with that membrane between life and death. I mean, if you're climbing that stuff with no ropes, a little bit of a death wish. So in any case, cool things to consider about the death mask. Lastly, let's talk about the mirrored image of Russell Brand's face. So if you saw my other videos, what we do in this portion is we look at the split of a person's face. Okay, so in face reading, the right side is our extroverted nature. It's the public persona we show the world. The left side of the face is our introverted or interpersonal nature. It's the side that we show our fam family and friends, our partners, and so on. So if you look at this picture, the middle picture is Russell Brand's natural face, right? Just his face. Now, if you look to the left, that is his right side mirrored twice. So what that means is the left picture is his external world face. Okay, it's the face, the public persona. Now, if you look over at the other one, okay, the one on the right side for you all, looking at this picture, that is his left side mirrored, which means that is his introverted or interpersonal nature. So take a look at these faces. For a moment, just tune into each face individually. The public persona, which is on the left, his natural face in the middle, and then his introverted nature on the right side. The question you wanna ask when you look at these images is, which face, not the middle one, the middle one is off, off limits, but out of the, the left and right faces there, the introverted nature and the public persona, which one would you wanna sit down and have a beer with and which one would you feel more comfortable with? For me personally, it's the one on the left, which is his public persona. The wider the feature eye, the, the, the features are, the wider the set um, eyes are, all of that, the wider features are usually a more open and welcoming nature. When we look at his interpersonal nature, the eyes are closer set. There's definitely more of an intensity. He looks meaner to a certain degree. He looks a little more, dare I say, predatory. And I don't mean in the sense of his allegations, but there is something more intense, more focused. The closer the set eyes, the more the, the more the energy of the person comes out like a laser beam. So in Chinese medicine, the eyes are seen as a projector and a receiver, right? We, we, we observe and project into the world and we also take in. So we see things and they can, we can see those things, beautiful things that can leave wonderful marks on us, or we can see horrible things that scar us. So life comes in the eyes and we also, how we see it, how we look at a piece of art is gonna be different than the, the person next to us. So they project and they receive. And his eyes at an interpersonal nature project, project out and they're closer set, which means he has an intense focus. So chances are Russell Brand is probably not a perfectionist, but probably 
very fast twitch in his thinking, very focused, very likely critical about people and things. And if you look at his podcast and who he's pointing at and focusing on, he definitely seems like that. His public persona side, the picture on the left, reminds me of one of those wide, wide set eyed goats, like the goats where their eyes are almost kind of branching out and looking this way. And if you see animal spirits, quote unquote, in a person's face, that's something to take into account because they say if you get a feeling about an animal from someone's face, chances are that person might have some attributes of the goat. So goats ram, right? They run into things. They push things down. And there's definitely a threat of that in Russell Brand's disposition. He's willing to take on the establishment and say, hey, this is how many billionaires were made during the lockdowns. That could be a problem. That's There's been a huge transfer of wealth. So in any case, these are the things that I see with Russell Brand. I could go on a lot longer, but like I said, I'm trying to stay focused on the most dominant features. So I hope you guys enjoyed the face reading. Leave your comments below if you would like me to read someone, and uh, it's good to be back. Thanks.